get on to this topic of neonatal uh, diabetes. I have no conflict of interest to declare. For many years now, uh, we have been an ICMR advanced center. In fact, we first made an ICMR advanced center for genomics of diabetes only. Now we have been made an advanced center for diabetes in, in general. So when you talk about monogenic forms of uh, diabetes, and Dr. Sandeep Julka has already talked about MODI. So MODI or maturity onset diabetes young comes there in monogenic. Neonatal diabetes also comes. Then there is congenital hyperinsulinism. This is not diabetes, but the opposite of diabetes. It's actually the opposite of neonatal diabetes. I'll mention in passing about that. Then there is MID, which you already discussed. Then there are genetic syndrome, which you already discussed. Dr. Bipin Sethi was there talking about lipodystrophic diabetes and, and, and others, and uh, uh, walcott rollison syndrome. And there are many, many forms of uh, Didmod syndrome and Wolfram syndrome. All those are come under genetic syndrome. But for the purpose of this talk today, I'm going to talk only about neonatal diabetes, which is defined as onset of diabetes below six months of age, which means newborn children. So neonatal diabetes is autoantibody negative. So by definition, it has to be autoantibody negative. Uh, insulin sensitive uh, type of diabetes, which is diagnosed within the first six months of life. So you really have to do, even if, it, if they're diagnosed below six months of age, you have to check the antibodies. In fact, uh, Dr. Andrew Hattersley, uh, who has been greatly influencing me in my work, some years ago when I told him that I saw a child type 1 diabetes below six months, he said, oh, it cannot be type 1. Uh, type 1 doesn't exist, he said, below six months. It's said, nothing in medicine is 100%. You cannot say it doesn't exist, 100% exists. In biology, it's never like that. Is it GAD antibodies are positive? You say, oh, no, no, that is all false uh, positive. It is only neonatal diabetes. You will find the gene. And last year, uh, a few months ago, this year, he has published a large series of, not large, uh, a fairly uh, a big series of neonatal type 1 diabetes. So when I told him, he said it can't exist. Now he is publishing a paper uh, on that. Anything is possible in biology, but within six months of age, the point is rule out neonatal diabetes because you will make a complete change in the treatment if it turns out to be some forms of neonatal diabetes. It's a monogenic disease, so a single gene defect, which I'll show you. And there are two types, the transient variety or the TNDM, transient neonatal diabetes, which occurs within the first six months um, goes away before the first birthday, but can come back during adolescence. I'm seeing some of these people coming back now with the, with the diabetes again after 10 years, 15 years. They're also begun to see. But it's not so common, or maybe they're not referred to me because it goes away within the first one year. In my series, the largest series is PNDM, which is permanent neonatal diabetes. It occurs within six months, and then you require lifelong either insulin therapy or tablet therapy or some therapy, but you need treatment for diabetes throughout life, and that's PNDM. Let me give you a, a case, two actual case studies, and interestingly, both are from West Bengal. Uh, this is a 72-year-old uh, female child, a baby who came uh, diagnosed to have diabetes 15 days after birth, just the second week, had some fever, had a blood sugar done, blood sugar was very high. So she started on insulin immediately, then she was on 14 units of insulin, 3.5 units per kg body weight given in four as four injections per day, small, small doses of insulin. And uh, the blood sugar remained between 300 to 400. It's not coming down. It's not responding to insulin. So she has referred to our center and said, have a look whether, uh, you know, in fact, I now recommend anybody, any child below six months of age, please send them to us for genetic testing. We'll do it free of cost for you. And within three, four weeks, we'll give you the results also. Anybody listening to this, please feel free to contact me and just send me the blood sample free of cost. We'll do the uh, test uh, for you, okay? Now, the, considering this history, of course, a diagnosed neonatal diabetes was thought of, and we sent the blood for genetic testing. We do it ourselves. In our own lab, uh, we do it. Our lab is an ICMR center, as you said. We have a sequencing machine, and the sequencing machine, we have it all set up. It's all ready-made now. It's very, very routine, for, like doing C-peptide and all for us, it is now. So when we put this child through this uh, sequencing, we, now, this is the normal sequencing pattern uh, that you will find in a, in a normal person, and you will find a GG here or a CC. Whereas uh, in this particular uh, electrophoreferogram of this child baby, we found it was GT. You can see that the whole curve, thing is, uh, curve is uh, kind of uh, mutated there, and you can see one on top of the other there. This is a mutation. And this mutation was picked up in the forward strand. In the reverse strand, we found a, a CA instead of the CC. Uh, so with this, this is confirmed. And this was in the, um, the KCNJ11 gene. Now, there are two genes which can produce neonatal diabetes. One is a KCNJ11, 
and the other is the ABCC8. ABCC8, nothing but sulfonylurea uh, 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 mutation, sulfonylurea receptor mutation. So this is a you know uh, 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 glide to valine uh, uh, mutation at the 334th uh, position, and therefore uh, with this we are able to confirm that this child had neonatal diabetes due to KCNJ11. Luckily, this responds to uh, tablets to sulfonylureas. And therefore, what we did was, uh, this is the uh, mutation. So we stopped the insulin for this child and started the child on sulfonylurea, glibentlamide, okay? And the dose of insulin slowly decreased. The child was admitted in our hospital. The dose of insulin gradually decreased and stopped over five days. You can see the dramatic uh, response. Now the blue is the blood glucose values, red is insulin, and the green is a sulfonylurea dose. So you can see, that the uh, the sulfonylurea dose was slowly stepped up like that, and then uh, kind of maintained at that particular. This is a, a dose of uh, sulfonylureas, and that's the red is a dose of insulin. Uh, so the dose of insulin, uh, which is about 12, 14 units, slowly came down, came down by fourth day, it's come to zero. See, and there is no insulin at all, and uh, you can see the blood sugars with insulin it was not responding. There's around 400, 500. Slowly, it started settling. As the sulfonylurea dose was increased there, you can see the sugar settling, settling. And now the sugars are below 100. You can see beautifully controlled. Uh, the sugars are very nicely controlled, very small doses of sulfonylurea and well controlled. So this is a dramatic instance. I would say in the whole of diabetes, this is one of the most satisfying experience. A newborn child, you're stopping insulin and then treating the child with the sulfonyl urea. By day five, you're able to completely stop insulin and the sugars are absolutely normal. You may say, how long do you know that this child will respond? The child is about, uh, I think, eight years or something now. And uh, she's still on, I'm in constant touch with her. She's still on oral drugs. She's not needed insulin. It's been years now. So it's not that some temporary phenomenon we showed. Um, and of course, uh, this made a lot of history because you can see that genetic test helps to treat diabetic infant. We, we did a press conference only to make people aware that such a thing is there. See, doctors say ignorance about the disease. But people say, no, 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 all this has not happened. Insulin is insulin. Treat with insulin. No, they don't respond to insulin. They respond to sulfonyl ureas. And therefore, this is a you know, path-breaking kind of a, a work. Now, the second child was also from West Bengal. It's a three-year-old female baby, three years old, mind but born of non conception she's detected of diabetes at the age of six months. So somebody, when I started, you know, uh, talking about this, they said, I've got a child, now she's three years old, uh, and she's still on insulin, but she was diagnosed at six months. I said, come on, send the child's blood. Let us see whether we can stop the insulin. And so she's referred to a center. This was with insulin, she was responding. She was on pre-mixed insulin, three, three units in the morning, two units in the evening, HB1C was 7.5. Uh, when you did the C-peptide, it was not very detectable, but GAR antibody was negative. And those were her results. Not too bad. And she was on insulin. The only hope they had was, can we switch her over to tablets? Okay. So we did the genetic testing. This time, she had a ABCC8, sulfonylurea mutation, val uh, valinine to alin, uh, uh, alanine uh, uh, mutation. And you can see the mutation here in the forward strand and then in the reverse strand as well. So it's a heterozygous mutation. And with this, we said, okay, now we can stop the insulin and started her on glibentlamide, 2.5 milligrams BD, okay? Now, these are the response of the child. I showed you initially her blood sugar was 138 and, uh, and 180 before lunch. And then it came down to 125 uh, to 176, 86 and 154, and finally after six months to 92 and 133 after switching over to glibentlamide. So she's also responding very well. She had needed no insulin at all and beautifully responds to sulfonylurea. Some of these children can have neurological problems. They can have um, a fix, or they can have neurological development <coughs> abnormalities. Sulfonylurea helps that also. The neurological problem also helps. Insulin doesn't help at all in that. Even the epilepsy can go away after treating with uh, sulfonylurea. Now, the first report that we published uh, was a few years ago in clinical genetics, 2012, almost 10 years ago. That time we had only 33 cases. Uh, and again, it was predominantly KCNJ and ABCC8. And we had 33 cases whom we reported. And just to show you that uh, seven of these cases, mo mostly KCNJ and ABCC8, and these are the mutations that we described, HB1C while on insulin, 14, 16, 10, 11, 7, all coming down to 7, 5, 6, 7, 7, 6, 6. 
<coughs> beautifully responding. Similarly, you can see the fasting blood sugar coming down beautifully to normal, while on insulin, they were not responding. Now, more recently, 2021, uh, this year, we published a, a paper in very important paper in pediatric diabetes, we published this. This time, we had 181 patients whom we had studied. 39 of them, we were able to find the mutations. And out of these 39, 20 had KCNJ11 mutation and 19 had ABCC8. So this is the uh, commonest uh, type of mutation. You may ask me what happened to the others? 140, you haven't found the mutation. Well, there are other genetic mutations as well, including the insulin gene, which we have just published now. The, the uh, next report we've just published now. It's an ongoing work. We have to find new genes. It's a, it's a long process and it's not something which is easy to do. And of course, you have a lot of collaborators uh, like uh, uh, Sharath Pansi had sent some cases and uh, Dr. Archana Dal Arya and uh, Dr. Raghupati from uh, earlier from CMC now in uh, Manipal uh, from Bangalore. He sends a lot of cases uh, almost every week. Now, these are the two genes which have the mutation. This is the KCNJ and this is the ABCC8. And what is shown here is the various mutations that you have. What is in red is the novel mutations which we have seen for the first time in the world. And we have deposited this in the world uh, registry. Now, just to show you that the recent paper in 2021, these are 20 cases of KCNJ and 19 cases of ABCC8. Why we did this clinical thing was, clinically, can we predict what is KCNJ and ABCC8? Unfortunately, no. If you look at the gestational age, birth weight, age at onset, self failure response, they are almost the same. So you cannot. So you have to do genetic testing. Without genetic testing, you cannot change. The other thing you may say, for all children with who are below uh, six months, can we stop insulin? They may die. Please don't do that. Okay. Only after genetic testing. There are some forms. For example, the insulin gene mutation, INS gene, we call it. There, if you have a mutation, the insulin gene itself is mutated. They will not respond to sulfonylurea. They will need insulin. Okay. Uh, so not all uh, the uh, neonatal diabetes respond to tablets. You should be lucky if you pick up these cases who can respond. Now, this is just to show you children with different. Now, this is a KCNJ11 uh, mutation. Um, where you can see uh, seven different patients with seven different types of mutation responding in seven different ways. You can see one of them, the blood sugar is about 1,000 in a uh, six, uh, I mean, few weeks old child, more than 1,000 milligrams. And others, 800, 400. Some have only 250, 300 milligrams. So depending on the mutation, the severity of diabetes changes. But they respond very well. And at the end of one year, two years, three years, four years, they are responding beautifully uh, to all the blood sugars are normal. So they all respond to sulfonylurea, although the mutation is different. This is the ABCC8 mutation. Again, different mutations having different blood sugar levels. And again, after a four-year period of follow-up, they are all responding very well. We have started what is called as the Monogenic Diabetes uh, Registry of India. If you just type www.monogenicdiabetes.in, it will take you to the registry and it will tell you how to send the blood, who, what kind of blood sample you should send, how to take the consent form. So any one of you who are is interested in these rarer forms of diabetes, please feel free to go there and then inform us. Now, we get samples from all over the country, as you can see from north, south, east, west, even from some of the northeast uh, places uh, we get. A lot of cases from Calcutta, but also from all, even from Ames, Delhi, uh, we get uh, lots of cases from PGI, Chandigarh, and from many, many, many top institutes in the country. We are the nodal center uh, for doing work on MODI, MID, uh, neonatal diabetes, and so on. This is a, a large series now, a current series. We have 477 patients. 274 with neonatal diabetes, 51 with various genetic syndromes. These are all the genetic, including uh, thiamine responsive megaloblastic anemia, Didmod or uh, Wolfram syndrome, different, different, 51 different syndromes we have, we have picked up. And then we also have a large series of congenital hypoglycemia. This is the opposite of neonatal life. Look at the number of cases, 152. These are children from the day of birth, they're getting hypo, 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 hypo. They don't respond to glucose. They don't respond. Some of them respond to diazoxate. If you do the genetic studies in them, again, it is the same KCNJ and ABCC8 and insulin gene, the same three. Only thing is one is a gain of function mutation. The other is a loss of function mutation. So from there, you can find out whether they'll get hypoglycemia or neonatal diabetes. Also, when you do the genetic testing, you will know who will respond to diazoxide and who will not respond. In fact, our largest collaborator is All India Institute at Delhi. And we have a large series of about 50 cases uh, combined being published in uh, International Journal of Pediatrics, uh, which is going to uh, be published soon. We're also doing some basic science work on that, trying to find out the mechanisms, trying to find out the, uh, the proteomics part and the 
uh, the, the functional genomics part, which another PhD student is working on. So I'd like to stop, ladies and gentlemen, by saying that uh, all children with diabetes diagnosed before six months of age must, must undergo genetic testing. Many of them may be able to stop insulin injections. Earlier, we had to send all the blood samples to Exeter, uh, to UK, to Andrew Hattersley. Today, we are able to do it in India. And as told you, we do it free of cost for you. Novel mutation in neonatal diabetes may identify in India. Neonatal diabetes with ABCC8 and KCNJ11 mutations can be successfully transferred to sulfonylurea from insulin. And this represents a miracle of sorts for the child. Imagine a child who's been told, lifelong you take insulin and saying, no, stop insulin. Here is a little tablet and the child is okay. Not just for then, but for years to come. It's nothing. This is the greatest miracle of diabetes that I have experienced in my life. And I'd like to finally thank uh, Dr. Radha Venkateshan and her whole team uh, here, uh, Dr. Kanti Madhi and, and all others. Uh, in fact, this work alone has resulted in 100 publications and 13 PhDs have come out uh, from this work. This is our big research center in Sirisari. It's a 40,000 square feet uh, facility. It's the largest, Asia's largest diabetes research center, only for research. There's no patient care at all there. And if any of you are interested to see the center, please do come and we'll show you around uh, the facilities there.